Congratulations on your investment in a central vacuum system. This central vacuum has been designed for ease of installation. Whether your house is brand new, under construction, or many years old, the procedures are virtually the same. But first, the keys to a successful installation are careful preparation and precise planning. And with this in mind, turn to the first page of the installation manual. It's suggested you read the manual through to the end. In fact, you may want to go through it a few times before watching the balance of this tape. Now, turn the VCR off and open the installation manual. The inlet valve should be near an electrical outlet for your optional power head. Remember too, the fewer the inlets, the better the vacuum system works. You want to be sure the hose can reach from the inlet valves to all corners of the room. And of course, around the furniture. Usually an entire level can be serviced from a single inlet valve. If you're working from a scale drawing of your new house, cut a piece of string to scale and use it as a hose on the plan. Don't place the inlet valves where there's a pocket door in the wall. There's not enough room in the wall for both. Also avoid placing the inlet valve behind open doors or furniture. You have a choice. A wall inlet valve or a floor inlet valve. However, with a floor inlet valve, you must bend over to plug it in. Therefore, the more convenient wall inlet valve is most popular. For wall inlet valves, the distance from the floor is a matter of individual preference. Some homeowners prefer electrical outlet height for the aesthetic value, while others prefer a more convenient fingertip height. Plan the entire pipe installation from the power unit to the selected locations of the inlet valves. It's best to run the pipe under the floor where possible in structures with basements. Sometimes this is not always possible, so you may have to run the system up into the attic and over to the power unit. It's essential to cover the pipe in the attic with adequate insulation to prevent condensation from forming in the pipe when the weather's cold. The same procedures can be followed as in a down or basement type of installation. In a two or three story existing structure, vacuum pipe can be run to upper levels through cold air ducts, in the back corner of a closet, or under stairways or beside a soil pipe. In the case of new structures, in the partition walls before the drywall is applied. Another tip here, the central vacuum system which uses the least amount of pipe and the fewest number of turns is the most efficient system. You'll need a number of basic tools as well as some standard safety equipment. Half inch electric drill, one with right angle head attachment would really be ideal. Deep cut two and a half inch hole saw, steel tape measure, screwdrivers, Phillips, and well that's the one with the cross shaped head, and flat bladed. Pair of wire cutters, hammer, two and a half inch masonry bit, three quarter inch chisel, sharp pocket knife, metal coat hangers, electrical tape, razor knife, miter box, hacksaw or small handsaw, pencil, flashlight, safety goggles, broom handle, stud finder, and medium sandpaper. It'll make the job easier if you put all the tools into an empty toolbox to carry with you around the house. Now all the planning that you did in the beginning is going to pay off in time saved. We've constructed a model to show a cutaway of the back of your wall and of your floors. Now on existing construction like this, you'll have to find the center of the bottom plate of the wall and then with a two and a half inch deep cut hole saw from the basement, drill a hole up into the wall cavity. A simple way to find the center of a wall is to drill a small pilot hole through the floor close to the wall in the location of the proposed inlet. A good drill bit for this is a short piece of sturdy white coat hanger, or about eight to 10 inches long, and it should be cut on an angle. Drill through the carpet or the hardwood and the subfloor as close to the wall as possible and on an angle like this, pointing the drill bit towards the wall. 
The coat hanging aloft is located in the basement ceiling. And being white, it's easy to see. Because of the angle of the coat hanger, you'll know where the wall is located. Now, in the basement, measure over from the pilot hole to find the center of the wall bottom plate. In the case of a 2x4 wall, this should be about 2 and a quarter inches, plus the distance from the pilot hole to the wall face. Always remember to wear safety glasses. With the location of the hole decided upon, it's now time to drill a hole into the wall cavity. Use a two and a half inch deep cut hole saw for this job. First with a flashlight, then with a piece of pipe, check to see if the inner wall is free of obstructions to the desired height of the inlet valve before drilling a hole in the wall. By using this method, we can see that the wall cavity on our model is clear of water pipes, wiring, and heating ducts. Centered at the desired height above the floor, make a mark on the wall, directly above the hole, as indicated by the coat hanger through the floor. This will be the center of your new inlet valve. Since I'm installing the inlet valve on an existing wall, I'll break off the new construction section from the side of the metal wall mounting bracket now. Then place this bracket centered over the mark just made. Now mark the top and bottom screw holes and wire guide holes. Then draw a three inch line on both sides of the inlet bracket. The wire guide holes mark the limits of your three inch lines. Use the bracket edge as a ruler to join the screw holes to the three inch lines. If there's wallpaper on the wall, it's wise to cut it away with a sharp wallboard knife first following the outline of the template on the paper. Measure the inner wall cavity to determine which end, A or B, of the white sharp 90 degree elbow you'll need to glue to the ring in back of the metal mounting bracket. Be sure it's a white sharp 90 degree elbow and not a 90 degree sweep. Note the exclusive white sharp 90 degree fitting actually fits both ways, depending on which inner wall space you have. In this case, the measurement shows a standard three and a half inch cavity. So glue side B to the back of the mounting bracket. Remember, in the narrower two and a half inch mode, you must shorten the bottom inlet valve screw so it doesn't pierce or obstruct the vacuum pipe later. Look on the back of the faceplate you'll see two small contact screws. These are the terminals to which you attach the low voltage wire. Now they've been turned out at the factory, the proper distance to take the wire. Do not, under any circumstances, remove the contact screws. If you do, you may lose the spring holding the contact in place. Strip the ends of the low voltage wires and then pass them through this wire guide hole with six to seven inches of excess. This will allow for future repair or maintenance to the inlet without running short of wire. Now take the wire to the elbow. Connect the stripped ends to the inlet valve contacts. Either terminal will take either wire. Now wrap the wire once around the valve stem and then push the inlet valve stem into the bracket assembly. Now just far enough to allow the top screw threads to begin to catch. Attach a small weight like this snipped off section of the metal bracket, to the other end of the low voltage wiring. Now drop it through the wall opening and let it hang through the bottom wall plate. Note, mount the inlet valve so the lid pulls down to open. Insert the entire inlet assembly through the wall opening and when the wall mounting bracket is completely inside the wall, slide the entire assembly upwards so the metal plate is flush with the inner wall surface and the inlet valve is flush with the outer wall surface. Next, insert the bottom screw in the inlet valve. Get it partially in and then make sure that it's vertical and straight. Then tighten up both the screws. Now, at this point, be careful that you don't tighten them too tight. Then check the inlet valve to see that it operates properly. There are several ways to take the vacuum pipe from the inlet valve to the basement, 
and we'll deal with some of those as we go along. But the most practical way is through the cold air register. And this is especially true in existing multi-level homes. Check the direction the duct flows. You'll find a flashlight and mirror useful here. If, however, it does not drop straight down to the basement and is a complex installation, please check with your local authorized dealer for detailed instructions. Place the inlet valve either above or beside the register. Double check the pathway by passing a long length of weighted low volt wire down the duct cavity until the weight taps against the sheet metal cover in the basement. You'll need some help at this point. Now in the basement, you can locate the tapping in the duct. After using the tin snips to cut the sheet metal, save the piece for a patch later. Start by gluing two segments of pipe together. Put them up the cold air duct. Glue and connect more pipes until your helper, upstairs, sees the top of the pipe in the cold air duct opening. The helper should hold the pipe firmly until you arrive to glue it to the white sharp 90 degree elbow. Sometimes it's easier on a main floor installation to install the inlet valve on the outside of the wall of a closet, running the pipes from the inlet valve through the wall to the inside of the closet and then down through the floor. Let me show you just what I mean. Upper level inlets can be installed in the same manner, running the pipe through the floor of the upper closet and through the ceiling of the main floor closet. Now be aware that the vacuum pipe will be exposed. So in each closet, try and keep it in the back corner if possible. When using the closet walls for the location of the inlet valves, use a piece of cut coat hanger to drill a pilot hole through the exterior and interior walls. Keep the coat hanger level so the holes will be in line. Now, check for inner wall obstructions. By bending a piece of coat hanger at a two inch right angle and push it through the hole, then twirl it in the cavity. Drill a two and a half inch hole in the interior closet wall only. Make the hole in the exterior closet wall the same way as was done previously for normal inlet valve installations. From inside the closet, if carpeted, pull the carpet back, drill a pilot hole as before, and check for obstructions. If it's clear, drill a two and a half inch hole in the floor. Then replace the carpet and cut a hole in it with a sharp wallboard knife. Run the low volt wire through the hole in the wall and down through the hole in the floor. This time, glue a coupling instead of a white sharp 90 degree elbow to the rear of the metal mounting bracket. Strip the ends of the low volt wire and pass a length of it through the guide hole in the metal bracket. Connect to the inlet valve contacts and fasten the valve to the wall as before. If your house is under construction, you'll follow the same basic steps, though you'll have to be careful about future obstructions as well as existing ones. If the wall is to be plastered, plaster guards are available to keep the inlets clean. And with new construction, you use the entire metal wall mounting bracket. First, make sure that all the cuts are straight and clean. Then get rid of the burrs and the ridges that might collect dust or hair to form a dirt trap later. A sharp knife will do the job. Or glue a piece of medium sandpaper to a small piece of dowel. And really, this is the method that I prefer. Test fit your pipe and couplings before you use any glue. The see-through fittings let you check to make sure the pipe is being pushed completely into the specially designed seat. This gives a perfectly seamless interior. Always apply glue only on the outside of the pipe or male part of the fitting, so excess glue is not pushed inside to cause a ridge which might interfere with airflow. Once the glue has been applied, push the pipe into the fitting, twisting slightly as you insert it. Hold for several seconds, and a permanent seal is achieved. Make sure that you use the white 90 degree elbow on the back of the inlet valve only. 
Following the path you outlined in the planning stage, start with the inlet valve furthest from the power unit and install the drop pipes. Through the two and a half inch hole drilled earlier, push a length of pipe up into the bottom of the white 90 degree elbow on the inlet valve assembly, which you previously installed in the wall above. One of the tricks that makes this easier is use a flashlight to look up the hole. However, why not do it the smart way and use a broom handle. Slide it up the pipe until you can insert it into the sharp white 90 degree elbow and then push the pipe into place. Next, trial fit this vertical line to the main line with a sweep elbow or Y fitting on the end of a short piece of pipe against the bottom of the floor joist. Mark the piece of pipe to fit the sweep. Cut, deburr, and reassemble. After you have dry assembled no more than 15 feet of pipe, glue the components together and proceed with the next sections. For an inlet valve connected through a cold air return, the procedure is just as simple. As mentioned earlier, if you're pushing pipe up to another floor, you'll need a helper. Once you've trial fitted the pipe, glue and connect each section of pipe together and push it up in the cold air duct. Continue this until the helper sees and takes hold of the top end of the pipe. Now go upstairs, glue and connect the pipe to the white 90 degree elbow. Now connect the pipes through the cold air ducts at the opening you cut earlier. Close it using duct tape on the patch. Then connect the fittings and the pipe. Then connect this line to the main trunk line. If there are inlets in the basement, connect them to the main trunk line as well. Nail a mounting bracket to a stud, glue a white 90 degree elbow to the ring on the back, then measure, cut, deburr, and trial fit. Then glue in place. In a similar manner, glue and connect all of the inlet valves to the main trunk line. But, and this is important, always make sure the sweep of your Y fitting is towards the power unit. Bring the low voltage wire along and splice them together at each Y junction. Now here's a tip. As you go along, you can either tape wire to the pipe or cut pieces of pipe into one and a half inch lengths to make these neat little clips for the wire instead. The pipe will normally run below the floor joist or above the ceiling joist. These unique hanger straps accommodate nails or screws. Slip over the pipe and keep the piping neatly and permanently in place. Once all the inlet valve branch lines are connected, run and connect the main trunk line to the power unit location you selected during the planning stage. If you're mounting the central vacuum power unit in the garage, first drill a pilot hole with a coat hanger drill to check location and for obstructions. Now drill a two and a half inch hole through the wooden joist above the masonry wall between the basement and the garage. The final step involves installing the power unit. If you locate it away from the living areas, you'll vacuum more quietly and at less restricted time. Detailed instructions for mounting each manufactured model is included with your kit. Remember, if you keep a vehicle in this part of the garage, install the unit so that it's not going to be in the way when the car is driven into the garage. Now the wiring. Strip the ends of the wire from the main vacuum line and crimp the strip low volt wires into these wire crimp connectors. Then reconnect them to the power unit. By the way, if you've installed the power unit in the house, such as in the basement or utility room, it's a good idea to exhaust the air in the power unit outside the house. The exhaust run should be no longer than 12 feet if possible. Plug in the power unit, flick the manual override switch on and off. It's in the off position. Just to test it and congratulations, you've just done it the smart way. Why not prove to yourself just how great your central vacuum system is? Plug in with lightweight holes and clean up any small mess you may have made during the installation. And it is easy to install in any home, old or new.